green. Here's to the crazy ones. That's one small step for man. The round pegs in the square holes. One giant leap for mankind. The ones who see things differently. This nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. You can quote them, disagree with them. The only thing you can't do is ignore them. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. The future doesn't belong to the faint heart. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world it belongs to the brave are the ones who do. Episode 23, make some noise if you love Jesus. TRBC students, make some noise if you love Jesus. LCA students, make some noise if you love Jesus. One more time for a good time. Episode 23, make some Holy Ghost noise if you love Jesus. Listen, I am excited. I am elated. I am honored to be here with you this weekend for episode 23 as we journey through what it means to live an uncommon life. I'm so excited to be here with you. Can we pray before we jump into our talk for tonight? Let's pray. God, we thank you and we bless you and we honor you for who you are. God, I thank you for each and every student that's assembled here today. God, we pray now that your spirit will fall upon us, that we will hear your word, that we will be transformed, and that we would live the life that you have called us to live in an uncommon way. Father, it is not by our might nor by our power, but it is by your spirit. It is in the mighty and wonderful and precious name of your son Jesus that we pray. Can everybody shout amen? Amen and amen. Hey, listen, I am so excited to be here with each and every one of you today. When you think about families, one of the things that you and I would agree with on tonight is that families always find a way to do one common thing. And that one common thing is to take a family picture. You have family pictures at home on your mantle, family pictures at home in your basement, family pictures at home in your den, family pictures at home um, in your bedroom. You have family pictures. But one of the things about family pictures, even though it's common to take a family picture, sometimes family pictures end up being taken in an uncommon way. I have a couple of pictures I want to show you of some family pictures that came out in an uncommon way. The first picture you see on the screen is a picture of a family who were musicians. They all said that they were going to get together one day and wear denim and take a picture. As you can see, someone missed the memo. Picture number two is a picture of a young man who took his freshman yearbook picture. He was excited to take this picture. He was so excited to take this picture. But when his mother seen the picture, she said, I want to do over right now. And you can look and see why. Picture number three is really a weird picture to me because according to the family on this picture what they said was their grandma has just died a week ago and 
The father built the coffin and the kids wanted to play in it before they buried her in it. Yeah. That's definitely uncommon. Somebody say, that's uncommon. The next picture you see is a picture of a young man who was getting the chance to hang out on the roller coaster. He thought he was ready for his big brother. And he said, I can do this. I can ride the roller coaster with my big brother. This is how the picture came out. Somebody say, that's uncommon. The next picture you see, this family picture, is a picture where the mother said she tried everything she could to get her son to smile for the picture. She did everything she could. This was the end result. That's uncommon. The next picture you see is a picture of my family. It's a picture of my family back around the time of 1983. And this picture is unique and common yet uncommon in many ways because this is a picture of when my family and I went to go see my father who was incarcerated in prison. Now, what makes this picture unique is that my father just passed away about two weeks ago. And I had to preach his eulogy. But as we were looking for pictures to prepare the obituary and the program, this is the only family picture that we were able to locate. That's uncommon. This is the only family picture that we were able to place inside of the program. This was the only family picture that we were able to come up with because um, we only had a chance to take this one family picture because of my father's situation. What's even more common about this picture is the fact that not only my father has passed away, but in this picture you see my brother, as a matter of fact, I don't know if you can tell which one is me, but I'm the chubby dude to the right, maybe you're left. That's me. I'm the chubby dude to the right, maybe you're left. What's unique about this picture as well, what's uncommon about this picture is the fact that my brother, who was to the far left, passed away about four years ago in 2018. And so with this specific picture, what we see here is that it's uncommon, yet it was common. It's our family picture, but we have some uncommon dynamics around it, being that now it's only myself, my mother, and my sister that are left alive among this picture. Episode 23, you may not have an uncommon picture in your home. But like me, you may be living an uncommon family circumstance or an uncommon family situation. Your parents may not be together. Your parents may be separated. Your parents may be on the verge or on the brink of divorce. Your parents may not have the best relationship with you. You may be adopted. You may um, be in the foster care system. You may struggle with depression. You may struggle with anxiety. You may struggle with connecting with friends and, and connecting with people and, and really finding meaningful relationships that matter. You may struggle with, with loving yourself. Or you may struggle with trying to find something good and just something nice that you like about yourself. You may be experiencing an uncommon life. You may be experiencing an uncommon situation. You may be collapsing and confronting uncommon circumstances. But episode 23, one of the things I want to get into your heart today, to get into your mind, to get into your ears, and to get into your spirit is this one thing. 
that as believers, as Christians, as those who walk with God, as those who love the Lord, as those who are seeking the face of God, as those who are seeking to give God all the glory, um, we do not get to forfeit an uncommon life because of uncommon circumstances. I want to say that one more time because I want you to really get that inside of your spirit. We don't get to forfeit an uncommon life because of uncommon circumstances. God tells us in our theme scripture for this weekend, Romans 12, 1, I'm going to read the Eugene Peterson's message version. He says this, he says, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday life, your sleeping, your eating, your going to work, your walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. This is my favorite part of this text where he says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you. He develops well-formed maturity in you. Isn't that powerful? Isn't it powerful to know that through the word of God, we're instructed not to conform to the culture around us, but to be transformed. How? By the renewing of our minds. We are told not to become so well adjusted to the current culture that we fit in without even recognizing it. And if truth be told tonight, many of us, even as Christians, have collided with the culture of the world. And so now we are living through blurred lines where we cannot determine if we are living for Christ or if we are living for the culture. There's no more black and white. There's no more um, either or. It's this and that. And we live in a culture where many young believers are forfeiting their right to live the life that God has called them to live just to conform to the culture. But God challenges us because one of the things we learn through this text is that you and I don't get to forfeit an uncommon life because of uncommon circumstances. And we learn in our text today in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15 we're introduced to a man who had two sons. This particular man had two sons, and one of his sons, the younger son, came to him, and he said, Father, today I want my share of the inheritance. I want West Mines right now. The father looked at him and simply gave him what he asked for. The Bible tells us that after the father gave him what he'd asked for, not long after that, this particular young man took what his father gave him and he went to waste it in what the Bible calls riotous living. In other words, what the Bible calls, he, he, he wasted his, his, his substance in such a way that he missed out on everything that God had for him. And so we'll, we learn in this text that as he went to go waste all of his substance, one of the things that happened to him is that um, he began to be in hunger and he began to be in want and, and a famine hit the land and, and he began to be in want, he began to be in lack. And, and the Bible says that he joined himself um, with others in that land. In other words, he conformed to the culture um, that was in that land. In other words, what this young man did was he went to his father, which was common because you went to the father when you needed something, but he asked his father an uncommon question. And you may say, what was the uncommon question that he asked his father? 
father. The uncommon question that he asked his father was he asked for his share of the inheritance now. Now, to understand why this is important, you have to know that the word of God tells us that the good man leaves the inheritance to his children's children. And so this inheritance that the younger son asked for, it was not time for him to receive it yet. But yet because he was so impatient, yet because he had been exposed to the culture, yet because he wanted what he wanted right now, he went to the father and he asked him an uncommon question. He said, Pops, let me holler at you right quick. He says, I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being boring. I'm ready to make it rain. I'm ready to throw up some money. I'm ready to throw some stats. And and I need my share of the inheritance now. But the father demonstrating um, unconditional love gave him what he asked for. What's uncommon about that is the fact that this young man wanted something that he was not ready for. And in the culture that we live in, we have a lot of young people who are looking to grow up too fast. Who are looking to grow up too soon. Who are looking to grow up and experience things that are not meant for you to experience at a certain age. And in other words, what you're saying is, God, I want this now. God, I need this now. God, I don't want to wait. But the only problem with that is episode is that when you refuse to wait, you forfeit your development. And when you forfeit your development, you limit your discipleship. In essence, when you and I rush to a thing that we're not prepared for, we may get more than we expected. We may get more than we bargained for. We see in our text, the younger son in Luke 15, he got more than he bargained for. Because the Bible tells us that he asked for his inheritance. And the Bible says that he went and he spent it all. In other words, this young man had an uncommon request for his father. But his father had an uncommon response because his father could have held on to it. But because his father loved him, because his father knew uh, that his son would, 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 would go and do the things that were not right and be coming back, he gave it to him. And so in other words, one of the things we learn that happens here is the fact that uncommon choices lead to uncommon circumstances. In other words, this young man got all of the inheritance. He got the ATM card, he got the pen, he went to put it in, and he cleaned the account out. And as he cleaned the account out, what he did was he went shopping online. He logged in on Amazon. He filled up his cart. He bought everything that he could. He went to every ball game he could. He spent his money on all the J's he could get, on all the clothes he could get. He did all of these things, but then guess what? He squandered his living. In other words, he wasted what he had. Can I ask you a question? How many of us are wasting what God has given us? How many of us are wasting our talents away? How many of us are wasting our gifting away? How many of us are wasting our moments of discipleship away? How many of us are wasting our purpose away? All because we refuse to live in an uncommon manner. All because we want to conform to the culture around us. And God is saying, if you continue to want to rush to conform to the culture around you, you will forfeit your spiritual growth through discipleship. And so what we see here is that because of his uncommon choice, it led to him being in uncommon circumstances. What were these uncommon circumstances? The Bible tells us that after he spent everything he had, a severe famine struck the country. And then the Bible says he had nothing. Imagine going from having everything to having nothing. Imagine going from having all you need to now you're in a position where you have to beg for what you need. Imagine going from being able to have access to your father 
to being in a place where you have no access. And so because he squandered all that he had, because he had this uncommon choice that led to uncommon circumstances, what we see happening here is that now these uncommon circumstances that this younger son is experiencing have now led to common conformity. So let me get this right. Because he goes to the father and he rushes his inheritance, he wants something right now. He wants to be an adult right now. He wants to feel grown right now. He wants to do everything that, that big boys and big girls do right now. He wants it right now. Because he went to go do that, what we see happening is that they led him to have an uncommon circumstances. What are these uncommon circumstances? These circumstances where now he has spent everything he had, and now the Bible tells us that he had nothing. So much to the point that not only did he have nothing, but he began to join himself to the other people of the land. And the Bible tells us that he longed to eat his field of pods, but he said the pigs were eating. But this is the key part about this text, is that he went from having everything to having nothing, and now he's in a position where the Bible tells us that no one would give him anything. Can I let you in on something, episode? We're living in a time right now where a counterfeit relationship with God just won't do. We're living in a time right now where a superficial relationship with Jesus just won't do. We're living in a time right now where when we focus on being conformed to the world, then we miss the uncommon love and the uncommon sacrifice that Jesus has for each and every one of us. That's what this man did. He went from having everything with the access of his father. He went from asking his father for everything until he went to a point of not having anything. And now he's at the point of begging. But not only is he at the point of begging, the Bible tells us that nobody would give him anything. Don't ever think that God will allow someone else to take his glory. Don't ever think that God will allow someone else to provide for you when he is the provider for you. Don't ever think that God would allow someone else to get you to think that it is okay to live in the culture that you're in. Because God will always interrupt your pity party for a purpose party. And so I like this because what we see happening here is this particular young son was having a pity party. He said, I don't have anything. But God did not dance with him in that pity party. God interrupted that pity party for a purpose party. How do you know that God interrupted that pity party for a purpose party? I know that God interrupted that pity party for a purpose party because what we see in verses 17 through 19 is that his uncommon realization led to him having an uncommon repentance. How did his uncommon realization lead to him having an uncommon repentance? Because it says this. It says that when he came to his senses, he asked himself a question. How many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food? In other words, I'm out here begging. I'm out here eating slop. I'm out here living beneath my privileges. I'm out here living not as a king's kid. I'm out here living in a pity party, not in a purpose party. How many of my father's higher hands have service? And so the Bible says he came to himself. What do we see happening here? We see right now happening that he is having an uncommon thought about who he is and what he's supposed to be doing. That's why Romans 12, 1 says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. So it wasn't until he realized who he was and who he belonged to that he said, you know what? I'm going to get up and return to my father's house. I like this because the message version tells us about Romans 12, 1, that we need to recognize what we want what God wants from us and respond quickly to it. What we see happening here with the younger son is that he recognized what God wanted from him and he responded quickly. He recognized 
what his father could do for him, and he responded quickly. He recognized the blessing that lied outside of the situation that he was in, and he responded quickly. It's not until you recognize what God can do for you that you walk into what he has already done for you. How many of us have recognized but we're not like the younger son. We're not responding quickly. We're responding slowly. You know why we're responding slowly? Because we all have been benegged into thinking that we all have time. Can I tell you what one of my mentors always told me? He always said, old people must die. But young people can die. In other words, we think that we have more time than we really have. And so we take our time with responding. We take our time with connecting with the culture. We take our time in living um, in an uncommon way in the culture, in an uncommon way from the word of God. But this young man recognized what he was missing, and he got up and went back to the father. In other words episode, his uncommon realization led to an uncommon repentance. What was so uncommon about this repentance? Because the Bible tells us that he had literally joined himself to the people of that far land that he was in. In other words, he had been led far away from God, and because he was far away, he had joined himself into that far land with God, and he had joined himself into those people, and he had become connected to them. In other words, he had become so well adjusted to the culture that he was fitting in without even recognizing it, and because he had become so well adjusted to the culture, he made an uncommon realization that led to an uncommon repentance. What makes his repentance uncommon is the fact that he realized that, man, if I get up, I can go back to my father. Some of us are in some situations that we haven't went back to the father yet because we're still laying down in our mess. We're still laying down in the mess of disobedience. We're still laying down in the mess of anxiety. We're still laying down in the mess of depression. We're still laying down in the mess uh, of sex. We're still laying down um, in the mess of drug use. We're still laying down um, in the mess of pornography. We're still laying down um, in the mess of getting on things that we don't have anything to do with. In other words, God is saying, you can't come back to me until you get up. This younger son realized that he could not come back to the father until he got up. I like this because he could have laid there in his pity party. But Jesus said, no. God said, no, not today. Huh. You're not finna lay on pity party today. No, you're not finna play this game with me today. You about to get up and you about to come and chase after me. You about to get up and you about to come and seek my face. You about to get up and you about to put me first. You about to get up and you about to make me the Lord of your life. You cannot lay in your pity party today because I have purpose for you. I like this because... What we see happening is this uncommon repentance. Can I be real with you today, episode? We're getting ready to close up. Repentance is uncommon in our culture today. People have become so comfortable with sin that they live in it without even the thought of repentance. That's why every time we look on Twitter, we see these things known as deconstructionalism. And we see people falling away from the faith and walking away from the faith. And we see people trying to cherry pick what they want to believe in scripture and, and believe what they want to believe. But guess what? What we're doing right now is we're forfeiting our opportunity to live in an uncommon way because of our uncommon circumstances. And God is saying we cannot do that. I like this because what we see happening is this uncommon repentance led to an uncommon response. He could have laid there in his pity party, but Jesus said, no, you got a purpose party. And God got him up and he went from the pity party to the purpose party. And, and I like this because the Bible says, so he got up and he went to his father. And what's amazing about this narrative, about this story, is the fact 
that when he got up, the Bible says his father saw him from a far way off. In other words, he had left the father, but the father was still looking for him. He had left his inheritance, but the father still had another inheritance waiting on him. He had went to go live in slop, but the father had royalty waiting on him. Can I let you know today that no matter how far you are off from God, no matter how far you have walked away from the Father, that God is still looking for you. Through your depression, he's looking for you. Through your anxiety, he's looking for you. Through your family problems, he's looking for you. Through your being misunderstood, he's looking for you. Why? Because we see the Father responding with uncommon love. Check this out, episode. The son didn't even realize that his father was going to respond with the love that he responded to. Why? Because he says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. He said, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. His dad like, what? You're tripping. You're not worthy to be called my son? How are you not going to be worthy to be called my son when you are my son? Don't let what you got caught up in keep you from knowing your worthiness in God. Don't let what you made a mess in and played in keep you from knowing your worthiness in God. And so here it is, the father responds with uncommon love. You know what that teaches us tonight, episode? It teaches us that God's love is not coming. <laughs> he doesn't respond the way people do. You know how your Twitter friends are, your Instagram friends are, your Snapchat friends are, you know how your TikTok friends are. Sometimes they may like your post, sometimes they may not like your post, sometimes they may share your post, sometimes they may not. Sometimes they may speak to you, sometimes they may not. Well, guess what? You and I don't serve a God like that. We serve a God that loves us with agape love. That means he loves us in spite of us. I don't know about you, but that's uncommon love. I don't know about you, but not only was this love uncommon, but the father lavished him. He said, quick, go kill the fatty calf. Go get the best ring. Go get the, the best clothes. And I want you to put it on my son because he once was lost, but now he's found. And I'm just wondering tonight, you may be at episode 23. You may be at episode 22. You may be at episode 21. I'm just wondering tonight, who's lost? I'm just wondering, who's, who's honest enough like the younger son to, to recognize that, man, you may just be too far away from God. And, and, and you may be squandering or wasting your gifts, your talents, and, and, and your inheritance and what God wants to do for you because you have joined with the culture. You have blended with the culture um, so much that, that, that what you're doing is, is forfeiting your uncommon way. So you, you're living um, your common life um, in an uncommon way um, by joining with the culture, not in an uncommon way by joining with the Father. And Jesus is saying tonight, I want you to live in an uncommon way. And you may be asking the question, how can I live in an uncommon way? By responding to the uncommon love of the Father. How do I respond? You got to get up 
out of what you've been laying in. Get up out of what you've been playing and get up out of what you made a mess in. And live in an uncommon way so that you can enjoy uncommon communion, uncommon connection, and the uncommon love of the Father. Don't become so well adjusted to this culture that you fit in without even recognizing it. Every eye closed, every head bowed on this first night of episode 23. And I'm just wondering who do we have that's present on tonight that has not been living your life in an uncommon way. I'm just wondering who do we have tonight that hasn't been walking with God in an uncommon way because you've been walking common with the culture. Jesus is saying tonight is the night that you make a decision to get up from where you are and walk with me because I've been looking for you. You left but I've still been looking for you. And I'm waiting on you. With every eye closed and every head bowed, if that's you tonight, I just simply want to ask that you would raise your hand. That you would raise your hand. That you would raise your hand. That's you tonight. That you would raise your hand. I see your hand. I see him. I see him. That you would raise your hand. Raise him high. That's you tonight. That's you. That's you tonight. God, I've been living uncommonly with the culture instead of living uncommonly with you. And God, I want to make a decision today to experience your uncommon love. If that's you and you raise your hand, if you, can you do me a favor? Can you do like this young man did? The Bible says he got up. Can you just stand up where you are? You don't have to move, but just stand up where you're on your seat. Can you just be bold? It took a lot of boldness for that man to get up. It took a lot of boldness for him to get up. Can you just stand up where, you're, where you are right now? If you raise your hand, can you just stand up? If you raise your hand, I just want to pray for you. Can you just stand up? It took boldness for him to stand up and realize that he was out of his father's will and he needed to be connected to the father and he needed to be connected to the cold. For those of you who have standing, I, I just want to pray for you before we go to another moment of worship and you break out into your small groups. And for those of you who may not be standing, you, you, you may, God may be dealing with you um, on another um, way, another level that, that we'll get a chance to unpack on tomorrow, but, but we, we, we trust God and we believe him. For those of you who are standing and those of you, if you're not standing, um, if you can repeat this prayer for me, just simply say, God, say, God, help me to follow you with everything that I have. Help me to live in an uncommon way to bring glory to your name. Father, we thank you for these who have heard your word on tonight. It is our prayer, God, that as we continue to get into your word this weekend, that you would continue to speak to us and help us to understand that you have called us to live in an uncommon way. God, that you have called us to get up from the message that we have created and to walk and be connected with you. And so, Father, tonight we ask that you would continue to minister to the spirits of those who are encamped inside of this room. That, God, even when they go back to their rooms and they go back to their small groups, that your spirit will continue to download on them and continue to pour your spirit into them, that we may be challenged to respond to your uncommon love and live in an uncommon way. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen.